Beat Kathy Campbell, geologist and astrobiologist at the University of Auckland. She's concerned with finding the evidence for the earliest life on Earth, and here's one of our papers, Kathy Campbell here, Earliest Signs of Life on Land Preserved in About 3.5 Billion Year Old Hot Spring Deposits. I sat down with her in Auckland, and we talked about the question, are we alone? What is your name? Kathleen Campbell, also known as Kathy Campbell. And are you an expert in rocks of some kind? I'm an expert in rocks. My current expertise is hot spring rocks, but I got my start working on undersea cold springs, also known as hydrocarbon seeps. Do you think life is getting more complex? Well, the fossil record tells us that it did get more complex. What it's doing right now, I don't know. There are some people who believe that the next species beyond us is half metallic or computer or robotic. So, you know, that's out of the realm of anything I know anything about. But we, if you look at the fossil record, you see from primitive to more complex. That's along our lineage. Our lineage. What if you look at a current E. coli along its lineage? How about that? Now you're starting to get into more biology than I know about, but uh, I guess people now talk about things like epigenetics. There's other types of evolution. There's, it's not just the Darwinian. So I think there's more for us to uncover, that's for sure. Okay, so the answer to the question, is life getting more complex, is, what's the other answer to that? I would guess it might be. How do you define complex? Hmm. Well, uh, good question. How might you define complex? How might you define <laughs> complex? <laughs> mm, when I think of paleontology, which is what I really know, then you're adding, you know, you look at trilobites, nautilus, and us. So and there you've got, complex. yes, you've got serious complexity, let's say, in the eye. There's a big debate out there. Did life evolve in hydrothermal vents in the deep sea, or did they evolve in hot springs, which, of course, is my favorite thing. But I, why not both? Mm -hmm. Why not both? Uh, it may be less plausible. People are beginning to think, gee, you know, what are we going to do about the diffusion problem in the vents? But there are some, there are some interesting ideas out there that need to be tested. And so my feeling is let's not narrow ourselves down into one little niche, because if we do that, you get trapped into your one idea. And I've seen that in paleontology, and that's where people fall over. But presumably we have good reason to expect that both of those environments would exist on any, almost any wet, rocky planet in the universe. Hey, we're seeing them out in those icy moons. Every drawing of those okay. has a hydrothermal vent. Okay, so I that's, wanna, talk, that's imaginary that's at the now. moment. Let's accept we have planets, we have hydrothermal vents. How about life now? How are we going to get life out of these things? Good question. What do you think? Well... Uh, you know, right now I'm looking at the wetting drying of subaerial environments, but you know, there are issues with that. If you are just inside the rocks a bit, that's a way to do it. So I think I would combine some sort of subaerial wet drying situation with also protection. So right. that's, that's the way I see it at the moment. Now, currently. are you talking about how life got started on this planet, or how did life get started, or how does life get started? There's a big difference between did and does. <laughs> right? Okay, did for us, yes. but we always are using these models to go out into space. You see it all the time. I mean, everybody's looking under the Antarctic ice now because they're all going to go to Europa. So, did so equals this does. Is, mm, I'm not sure that it, it's like saying does form equal function. You know, that's a loaded question. So, um, you know, you, you answer that. You're more of a biologist than, than even I am. But the bottom line is that we've got a few things to start with. Uh, but is there life in the clouds of Venus today? People want to know that. People are going to go there and check that out within the next 20 years. Well, I can you, guarantee you, you that said they will. That we have we don't have life on Earth's clouds, so... Uh, yes, uh, it's all just dead stuff that's been washed up in there. No. So, yeah, anyway, so the, the point is that you've got, to have other, you've got to have a bunch of ideas. I hope they're well-grounded. I hope the experts are going to come in and say, yes, this is plausible. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. But I'm really willing to allow it to be in multiple types of settings, multiple environments, and mm -hmm. let it arise, let them arise in different places. How about uh, human-like intelligence? Do you think that's something that uh, would evolve again somewhere else? Sure. Because? Uh, well, I guess my feeling is why, why do we think that we have to be unique? And since we don't know whether there are other dimensions, like we're the chair leg of a table, then you've got to allow for the possibility of intelligence to arise more than once. What do you think are the public's or students' biggest misconceptions about the question, are we long? I think the biggest, and, and Seth pointed it out, a huge number of people, certainly in the United States, think that you know, we're hiding the aliens and that they've been found already. So I think that is a huge misconception. So these are hard questions you're asking. They're really difficult questions. And if we had the answer, we wouldn't be sitting here. We'd be doing something else. We'd be having a holiday on some other planet right now. 
with our alien friends, the warm fuzzy ones that I want to find. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I think it's great to ask everybody because, you know, some people are a little more open about are we a table leg and others aren't. And I just think, wow, the sky's still the limit. We, because we can only, whatever we can observe, that is science. What, what's beyond science? I don't know. But I'm not going to shut out the possibility that there's something beyond science.